In this chapter we're going to look at organizing information in Vectorworks. When we want to create drawings we're going to use a concept like we used in Chapter 2. That is we can create a model and from that model we can extract drawings. In order to build the model and create the drawings we need to understand four main concepts in Vectorworks. Design layers, classes, sheet layers and viewports. In this lecture we want to understand when should we use a design layer and when should we use classes. What are design layers for and what are classes for? You might think these are interchangeable concepts but they're not. So it's important for you to understand when should you use a design layer and when should you use a class. Let's start by looking at the concept of design layers. Design layers are designed to break up your design into manageable chunks. For example, in this exercise, which is the one that I'd like you to use called Making Drawings, we've got two design layers, bracket 1 and bracket 2. And these two brackets line up with each other, but they serve different functions. So design layers are great for breaking up your model into chunks so you can work on a piece at a time. If you are an architect, you might break up your building into chunks for the foundations, for the floors, and for the roofs. And that would make it easy for you to break up your building into chunks. If you were a landscaper, for example, you might break up your project into chunks so that you have all of the consultant's work separated from your work. This would then make it easy for you when you get updated drawings from the consultant, you wouldn't have your work mingled up with the consultant's work. If you were doing furniture design, you might use a three-dimensional model to create your furniture and then use that to create the drawings from it, as we did in chapter number two. You might think of layers as being horizontal chunks of information. When we look at a building project, it's easy to think of the building as being horizontal chunks. Roof, walls, and foundations. When we think of a landscape project, on the other hand, we could think of the consultant's work being one chunk and the landscape design being a chunk on top. So again, horizontal chunks of information. Classes, on the other hand, are completely different. Classes are vertical. They're not a sub-layer. They go right through the file. So if I turn off a class, it'll turn off that class in every layer. For example, I've got a class here, which is my planting. If I turn off planting, it turns off planting in every layer of my project. If we go back to my architectural project and I turn off my furniture, it'll turn off that furniture in every layer. If I turn off my walls, it will turn those walls off in every layer. The word shown here is my active class. My active class is currently none. Anything I draw at the moment will be on the none class. And this is my active layer. You can change your active layer in your active class by clicking on that pull down menu and choosing a different class or a different layer. So now anything I draw will be on the notes plan and it will be on the roof layer. On a landscape plan, you can see that I'm drawing with my active class set to none. It's the one with the tick. I'm also drawing on the landscape layer. So anything I draw will be on the none class and on the landscape layer as well. If we have a look at the navigation palette, it's this one here. I'll just drag it out so you can see it more easily. You can see that none has the tick. So in my classes, none has a tick. That's my active class. If I click on another class, like that one, from now on, that is my active class. These are my layers. And you can see that landscape has a tick. And if I click on another layer, that is now the active layer. And anything I draw will be on that layer. I'm just going to dock the navigation palette back where it was. Stretch it down, and I think I had that over here. So we have our classes and our layers over here. 